Built on Domer's growth model, Solo's growth model is a more optimist uh, look at the macroeconomic picture. Here we are going to do its qualitative analysis and we are familiar with Robert Solo who is a Nobel laureate and is famous for various contributions in economics. This is one of his major contributions and we are going to analyze it qualitatively and then quantitatively as well. So uh, in this video we will be talking about the qualitative aspect. It is a model definitely we uh, know about the Domer's growth model and uh, uh, Domer's growth model suffered with the uh, lack of uh, presence of delicate balancing because it is not uh, possible to retain the equilibrium um, in that certain model and razor edge was the certain situation that was highlighted in that that if the macroeconomic equilibrium is achieved it is perhaps near to impossible to achieve it again. However, this Solos growth model is a optimistic picture of the macroeconomic uh, equilibrium and right now we are going to resort to its equation which is this equation and we are going to unravel this equation in the next step but this is that equation which is uh, derived by using various uh, pieces of information uh, for that you can consult the book of Rob, uh, Alpha C. Chiang and in that book you can find the details of the um, development of this equation However, the economic meaning of this uh, equation is that this is small k and small k is actually equal to capital over labor. It is the ratio of that and it is the rate of change of capital per worker or labor. So when we have this dot, it means that we are dealing with the rate of change and small k is uh, capital per worker. So you can guess that this uh, term is not just a simple term, primarily it is the ratio that is capital per worker that how many uh, units of capital each worker is using and then we have the um, rate of change of it. So there is uh, a couple of things hidden in this symbol. Then this small s shows the marginal propensity to save which is a very commonly used economic concept and it is being multiplied with the production function which is represented with this Greek symbol and k is again capital per worker. And then there is a minus sign and then there is lambda into capital per worker and this product is actually the depreciation in the overall economy and uh, the product of MPS and phi k is the investment. Uh, so investment minus depreciation is what we have on the right hand side. Now uh, there are three possibilities here of this uh, equation how it can be. It can be either equal or less than uh, or greater than the right hand side. So the first possibility is that both of uh, you know these values they are uh, mentioned here highlighted but if uh, this value is greater than the other value that is the investment if it is greater than the depreciation it means that the capital per worker will increase it will go up because there is more investment and the uh, wear and tear due to depreciation is lesser. So on the whole the net effect would be an increase in the capital and hence capital per worker. And K1 to K asterisk will be the movement. You might not be uh, unable to understand this K asterisk but this is a symbol that we will see in the diagram and it shows the steady state equilibrium which is the uh, required situation or desired situation in any dynamic uh, uh, environment. So the other possibility is that if the investment is equal to the depreciation and if they are equal 
definitely there will be no change in the capital that is there will be uh, no change in capital the rate of change of capital will be equal to zero and hence the capital per worker ratio will remain the same it will not change in other words we are already at that equilibrium stage where the tendency to change is not there we are already in that uh, certain situation where we want to the other possibility is that on the right hand side the investment is less than the depreciation it means that there is more wear and tear as compared to the investment and that means that the uh, capital is declining that is the rate of change of capital per worker is declining because there is more wear and tear than investment so the capital per worker will definitely decrease and in the diagram you will see that the point k2 will come uh, to uh, k asterisk which is the steady state equilibrium so uh, this is something that you can easily read and you can uh, try to relate it with this symbolic representation of the three possibilities that we might face now this solo growth model in diagrammatical way can be represented with this diagram we need to understand the x-axis as well as the y-axis on the x-axis we have capital per worker which is represented by k as we just saw in our mathematical uh, derivation and on y-axis we have investment and depreciation these are also two variables that were there and we use them to develop that um, equation now investment and depreciation they are plotted as the dependent variables and here we can see the depreciation as uh, it was there and uh, capital was uh, capital per worker was there which is uh, a certain value and then lambda was a constant rate of growth of labor so we can guess that um, there is no time variable in it and it is likely that it will remain um, a, a positively sloped straight line because it is a linear sort of relationship and you in, uh, remember the investment function it was since a function s into lam uh, phi k so it can be any um, uh, functional form and uh, primarily if we talk about this term in it it is representing a production function which is based on capital and labor and from the standard theory of production function we know that it has diminishing returns so it is going to show us this kind of form and when we multiply it with s that is a ratio of the investment is there because this is the output and we take a certain amount out of it and we in the form of savings and then we invest it so it means that s is less than 1 and the same pattern will be observed when we will uh, multiply s with the uh, function that we have here uh, for example if it is 0.6 it means that it is going to reduce it to 60 percent so if this is the output function this will be the investment function something lesser than that but it will re retain its pattern because it is just a um, trimmed down version of the original production function so it is going to have the same sort of pattern and here you can see it is having the same sort of pattern if this were the uh, output then this is the investment so we are not going to draw the output curve here just to make sense of the investment function we have made a sketch of it and uh, now we can see that there is uh, you know in point of intersection here and it is represented with k asterisk and before it we have k1 and after it we have k2 now let us make sense of uh, why this arrow and this arrow is uh, you know pointing towards k asterisk at any point for example here the investment is greater than the depreciation so when the investment is greater than depreciation capital should increase 
and when capital increases capital per worker ratio it increases which means that k1 will move towards right and meet k asterisk now let us assume this point after the intersection here the depreciation is greater than the investment and when this happens definitely uh, the amount of capital will decline because there is more wear and tear um, and then due to which the ratio of the capital labor that is capital per worker will also decline and it is visible here because k2 is reducing towards the left and reaching k status which is showing that there is uh, you know movement towards the steady state equilibrium or steady state level of capital per worker here capital stock increased because of the investment it was greater than the depreciation and here capital stock decreased because the depreciation exceeded the investment so in this way we can see that the steady state uh, level of capital per worker is achieved which is showing an optimistic picture of the solos growth model which is showing um, a, a desirable situation in the macro economy which is opposed to the uh, dismal picture drawn by the uh, domers growth model now this was a simple graph in which we uh, connected these two variables that were there in the solos growth model equation this equation but now we are going to make a phase diagram of it and when we make a phase diagram it will look something like this that is k the capital per worker variable and the rate of change of capital per worker now uh, once if we have this let me write it in a more explained way this is how we write it capital over labor capital k and capital l which is equal to small k so when we make it this k asterisk which was there in the diagram above will be here somewhere and here the rate of change of uh, capital per worker over time will be equal to zero but before it since the value of uh, k asterisk is positive it means that k will increase so k1 is happening that is it is increasing towards rightwards and uh, it's re uh, moving towards the steady state capital per worker situation and here below the origin the capital per worker derivative is less than zero a negative value definitely of the variable plotted on x axis y axis so in this case the capital per worker should decline and it is happening here with the uh, and it is shown with the red uh, part of the phase line that the derivative is negative and k2 is happening and it is moving from right towards left and it is converging towards the uh, k asterisk which is the steady state equilibrium and this is the steady state equilibrium and we can see that we are dealing with an attractor here attractor also uh, highlights that there is convergence and all of it, this description is given here below and after uh, before and after or below or above the um, x intercept which is k asterisk you can see that the situation will be that the phase line will be above x axis and the rate of change of cap uh, capital per worker over time will be positive as you can see here it is the positive range of the uh, values on y-axis and this is the negative range of the y-axis in which the variable that is uh, k asterisk will be uh, k dot will be negative that is the rate of change of capital per worker over time so accordingly here capital per worker will increase and move rightwards shown by this arrow and here the capital per worker will decrease and move leftwards as shown by this arrow this is very much similar to what we did before when we understood the phase diagram in the last video 
So you can refer back to it and try to um, make more sense of it by using that basic example in which y and t were used as the dependent and independent variables. Here we can summarize that there is attraction towards x-intercept. So we have an attractor as you can see here and therefore there will be convergence and dynamic stability will be there or the stable intertemporal equilibrium will exist or the steady state equilibrium as suggested by Robert Solo in this growth model will be achieved. As you can see we are achieving this steady state growth um, uh, in the um, equilibrium process um, you know before and after this uh, x-intercept there is convergence there is attraction towards this certain point. So the postulate of the Robert Solo's growth model um, that the steady state equilibrium will be achieved uh, whenever there is some inequality between the investment and the depreciation is being uh, verified uh, in a qualitative way here. We are trying to do this qualitatively with the help of the diagram but we can also do it quantitatively which we will do in the uh, next video. Thank you.